Carpet is a talk show that explores topics that people find difficult to talk about. In this series, hashtag MeToo, my guests and I share our personal experiences and thoughts from the perspective of a corporate executive, a social worker, a parent, and a survivor. My name is Deborah Ting, and I'd like to invite you to join me on this journey. What does sexual harassment mean to you? Right. Um, to tell you the truth, I've not actually have that word thought out or even addressed it within myself. Mm -hmm. Probably it's because I just want to stay away from it mm -hmm. and not think about it. But in short, I think it would just be an attack, mm -hmm. an unwanted attack mm -hmm. in whichever way that person chooses. Mm -hmm. You know, we <clears> had a <throat> chat about this some time ago mm -hmm. and you were sharing some stories about what had happened to you mm -hmm. when you were much younger. Um, would you like to tell us more? That would be um, when I was seven. Um, and now thinking back, I think it was planned to a certain degree. When the kids, uh, the smaller kids were playing, uh, much younger than I am, um, they were asked to make as much noise as possibly can by, by my abuser. Who was this abuser to you? Um, he was a relative. I grew up trusting um, this person. I had no clue what was going on. All he said was play. Mm -hmm. and, and Did he like take you away from the group of children? No, no. It was all in the same room. That was it. You know, we, we were on the mattress on the floor and the kids were all playing on, on the bed. What did he do to you? Um, I could remember the pressure mm -hmm. that he, his whole body was on me. And what was going through your mind when all this was happening to you? All I could thought was, what kind of play is this? It just felt weird. And at some point I thought, well, he's trying to put his mouth on my mouth and do whatever he wanted to do. And I just felt disgusting. I said, ooh, you know, mm. <laughs> you, this is what you, you get because your parents don't talk about it. Your grandparents don't talk about it. School definitely didn't teach. Mm. Your friends are too naive to, to, to know anything like you. Did you ask anybody what was happening? Well, one of the things that he said was, yeah, it's only play, you don't have to tell anyone anything. So he actually made the whole experience feel like it was something natural and something yeah, yeah. that was unthreatening yeah. to you? Um, it was only when it happened the second time when I think the second time the kids went around, it was just me, same room, same place. And I think how this, old were you by, by this time? The second time was also seven. It was just a, a few weeks or maybe a couple of months down when, when it first happened. And if I'm not wrong, the second time was a bit harsh, a bit more aggressive. It felt different because there wasn't anyone playing on the bed and he wasn't distracted and, and what was the situation um you we so no one was home no no okay. um the, the adult was talking outside mm -hmm. so there were actually people in the house yes. when this was happening yes. in the in the room twice those two times mm. the first and the second time and mm. obviously the second time i have no idea what he said or what he did that you know that the, the adults don't come in he didn't push me down or force me down. He just like, like sit down or lie, lie down or something like that. And mm -hmm. he proceeded to like, like kind of fall on me or just like jump on me. And uh, well, I, I told you how skinny I was. And, and at seven, I was just basically as skinny as one of these poles here at that age, seven, mm -hmm. you know. It's somebody you trust yeah. and you definitely don't have a second thought or doubt of any kind. Mm -hmm. And therefore, I, I, I didn't feel anything until I got out. And my mother asked, I think, you know, what are you doing there? Why are you so quiet? I'm like, oh, nothing. Just sleeping. And now that you recognize that you were, he, this guy had actually, you know, abused your trust and, mm. and done something that he shouldn't have done to you. Mm. Did you wish that you had, like, you know, reacted in a different way? Obviously, yes. <clears throat> I would, I would, 
would I have, I would just say no, you know, and, and clung on to my mother as much as possible to at least let her know that something was not right. The third time didn't happen, I think I actually did something quite close to that was I told my mother I don't want to go mm. and she asked why and I said I just don't like to go there anymore and no no it's relative you don't need to pay respect to your elders whatever mm. and I just followed <clears throat> when I got there I didn't want to enter the room mm. with without anyone going in with me yeah that was I remember doing that and if your mother had actually picked up on that cue and actually probed a bit deeper, do you think that might have got you to, to tell her what happened to you? In my understanding and in my point of view on this is that um, I'm the eldest. Mm -hmm. and time and again, I, told, I was told that I need to be independent and take care of myself. Mm. And I need to know how to handle things that come to my way. I'm afraid that by telling, they may think that I'm just fibbing or, or lying or, or just want, want to get attention and also being afraid that I might get whacked mm -hmm. if the person denies or, or, or convinced that that never happened. If I mention the kid, the kids will never remember. We would really love to hear about your experiences and thoughts. Please leave them in the comments below. Subscribe to our channel and also find us on Instagram and Facebook. And more importantly, please share this video with everybody you know. You might actually really help somebody just by doing that.